Boom blast. And we are live. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps post game show. As always, my name is Sheldon Alexander, and this episode of Wrap It Up is brought to you by Clean Cuts Barbershop, 2013 Danforth Avenue in the east end of Toronto. Clean Cuts, the multicultural barbers that will always keep you fresh for any and all occasions. So go see Skip and the crew. As a wise man once said, tell them that I sent you. Check them out on Instagram at Clean Cuts Toronto or give them a call 416-917-4833 to book your appointments now. Raptors fans, how you guys feeling after that one? Raptors win 112 to 99, but obviously lose two key players. Injuries to Marcus and Norman Powell. We'll get to that in a second, but first introductions. Q, what's going on, man? How you doing? How you feeling? Where can the people hit you up? Chilling, chilling, chilling. What's up, Twitter? What's up, Instagram? Again, catch me personally on all social media. Simply underscore just underscore Q. Or, of course, at ddscaps.com and on social media at ddscaps. And my name, of course, is Sheldon Alexander. You are following this live on Twitter ASAP, ASAP on Twitter at Shell Alexander, as you do after each and every Toronto Raptors game at Shell Alexander. If you see this feed right now on Twitter, hit us with the like button, hit us with the retweet, and share the love that is the Wrap It Up podcast, the only Raptors post-game show that is live to you, the fans, live and interactive, doing the do. So you can find us on Twitter at Shell Alexander on Instagram at Sheldon Alexander. There's another feed that's up there. And for the people that are on Instagram, if you go to the link in bio, you can click on that link and that link will send you to the main feed, which is on Twitter that you can see the full set. You can see Q, you can say hi to Q and you can take all, we take all your comments and questions there as well. So again, if you are on Instagram hearing this right now, go to the link in the bio and you as well can join the main feed that is up on Twitter. And of course, I don't got to tell you if you're watching this live or if you are listening to this on the next day, but we got you covered in podcast form as well. iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Like and subscribe, hit us up and you know, Spread the love. That is a wrap it up podcast. And the Raptors, I think, need a little love after that one. Because they win the game. Yep. And I'll start with this for you, Q. The bigger deal here, Raptors getting the win as they still try to turn things around after a tough week last week. Or what's the bigger deal, losing Norm or Marcus Gasol? Definitely, I think, although Norm has been playing great last couple of games, mm-hmm. Uh, losing Marcus Saul will be the bigger loss uh, if he happens to miss a couple games. Um, obviously, we're not as deep at the center spot. Just bigs in general, yeah. yeah bigs, totally. Yeah, bigs in general, right? Um, right. So you have Serge back. Serge had a good game. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after that, you're down to Boucher, who is not your prototypical big. Mm-hmm. Um I think we've seen in this game also the third quarter that the offense tends to get a little bit stagnant. Yeah. Without uh, Gasol, without the ball going through Gasol. Mm-hmm. Um, defensively, you're going to miss miss Gasol. So. Yeah, and this is a thing, right? Raptors improved to 19 and 8 on the season. It's a good win, but they didn't really look good in this game. This was a very ugly game that didn't really have a lot of flow on either side and I feel bad for Dwayne Casey I'll always rep Dwayne Casey I like Dwayne Casey a lot but Blake Griffin looks washed and he's coming off knee surgeries and we know that's a tough spot for him but poor Dwayne Casey but on the flip side the Raptors you mentioned just without Marcus Gasol Serge Ibaka fills in great 25 and 12 from Serge which you desperately need, especially without Marc Gasol. But I think the big part of this, and this is where we go back to the constant debate about Marc Gasol's value to the team. Again, it's not going to show up on the stat sheet, but if you paid attention to that Raptors fourth quarter especially, but just in terms of the rest of the game after Gasol wasn't on the floor, the offense was not good at all. There's no ball movement, and 
other than the Raptors and Kyle, running the Kyle Lowry pick and roll with Serge, there's not much else going on. It's pass the ball to Siakam or mm-hmm. Kyle, and they try to ISO. But the problem is everyone else is just standing around and watching. And that's the part where, to me, where we mention why Marcus Gasol is such a key point. He's moving the ball. The ball doesn't stop in his hands. And when the ball stops, you give the chance to the defense to load up. Load up on Siakam, load up on Lowry or shade over towards Lowry, cheat on those pick and rolls. And that's the part that's going to be tough going forward with no Marc Gasol. How do they remedy that? Is it going to be Boucher? Because it wasn't in this game. Chris Boucher didn't get that many minutes. He only played six yeah. minutes in this game. Well, that's, that's the thing. I think Boucher, and you know I'm a Boucher guy. I mm-hmm. rep Boucher. But the matchups... There's not going to be a lot of matchups that dictate Boucher is going to get minutes. Yeah. So going up against Drummond, mm-hmm. who is a top five rebounder in the league, a, yeah. a big guy, bruiser. Top three rebounder. Top three rebounder. Yeah. That matchup for Boucher is not not a good one. Yeah. yeah. Right? So then you're left with just surge or trying to go small. Right? And it was interesting to see what Nick Nurse did early because he tried to bring in Boucher right away. And then it didn't really work, but he pulled the plug quickly and went to Rondé. Yeah. And I kind of saw exactly what was going down. I felt like the vibe was Rondé can handle the pick and roll in terms of being the guy who sets the screen and then rolls to the basket. Yeah. At this stage, Boucher's game isn't strong enough to do that consistently. Like, roll hard to the basket and make a play. Do you know what? Like, he, he might be able to finish at the rim, yeah. but in terms of getting the ball at the top of the key having a dribble, maybe having to go by a defender as well, his game's not really there yet. And it's not as smooth, definitely not as smooth as run, watching the Kyle and Serge pick and roll. Right. But now when Serge is in the game, you could see they brought in Rondé because he can do that. But he struggled in this one because, as you mentioned, the Pistons have a big front line. We're talking Blake and uh, Drummond, but how many teams even have your quote-unquote standard center power forward Right. that actually play in the paint. Because Drummond and Blake Griffin, especially early in this game when it was still close, and I know it was close at the end, but I guess when the game was still a game, let's say, all you could tell, the Detroit game plan was to feed the ball inside and just pound the paint. And it was working early mm-hmm. for Drummond and Blake Griffin. That was with Marcus all in the lineup. Right. My worry now is what happens going forward and our other team's going to say, hey, our advantage against the Raps is just pounding the paint because Serge can't play the whole game. Right. And I don't know if Boucher's there yet to be the the center or lone yeah. big holding down the floor for Last extended thing, Boucher, minutes. Boucher's a guy you put in there to give you some energy, mm-hmm. some quick energy. Yeah. But to say he's ready to be your everyday backup big play 20, 25 minutes a game, I think that might be pushing it a little, depending on the team we're playing against. Yeah. Against Detroit, Boucher is, is no. If Marcus Hall doesn't get hurt, mm-hmm. Boucher probably doesn't come into this game, right? The matchup just doesn't dictate that. Yeah. So, and we saw Boucher didn't really play much last game either. Right. So that's very true. Um, I'm trying to also watch Twitter to see if any post game has come out yet. And so far, it seems like Nurse isn't sure about Gasol or Powell, the seriousness of those injuries. Um, and yeah, people are asking, but they don't know yet. So yeah. I'll try to keep an eye out as we continue on this podcast. So if there's any updates, I'll try to keep an eye on Twitter as we continue talking about what's going on in this Toronto Raptors after this Toronto Raptors win. But as of now, filling in for Marc Gasol is going to be tough. And I'm telling you guys, if you watch that fourth quarter, that's the thing. The, the offense just stalls, and there's no movement. It's a lot of Pascal going one-on-one. And and the biggest issue is the other four guys just standing and watching. But I think I think that's that's more a, a, I think it's a product of the pick-and-roll, um, the pick-and-roll offense that they're playing. Mm-hmm. So they run Kyle and Serge, run the pick-and-roll. Yeah. And the other three guys are just spotting up for threes. And we already discussed yeah. over the last couple of games, the Raptors aren't really a spot-up shooting team, right? When they move the ball and swing the ball and make the extra pass, yeah. 
and get an open shots, that's when those shots start to go in, right? Mm -hmm. If you're just standing there thinking you're going to J.J. Redick it, the Raptors don't have that player, right? Not yet, no, for right? sure. So that's why, that's why the pick and roll, that's why I think the Raptors kind of struggle in the pick and roll. Yeah, I mean, really it works in the sense that when Serge is coming off the bench and your starters aren't there and now you need to run the offense exactly. a certain way for to, to, you know, kill some time for lack of a better term well i think it, as it, opposed think to it, that being the focal point of your offense exactly for an so it, it, it works better when in you spurts. when you're playing in the second with the second string guys where you have ronde boucher some because sometimes they say boucher at the four with surge at the five mm -hmm. and those guys are just in there rebounding and puzzle plays they're, they're not spot up shooters either right yeah so they but when you have uh, norm siakam og in there they're thinking that they're just going to wait there, you know, the ball's going to get the surge, and then he's going to drive and kick, and they're just going to hit open threes. Really and it, that that's, way, yeah. that's not their strength. The tough part, too, is that Marcus Gasol was stringing together a couple really solid games, even yep. offensively, yep. and I talk about how much, in, how much more important it is the stuff that doesn't show up on the box score, but what he was doing, he was doing that and showing up on the box score the last few games. Right. So that's a tough sign. Another I think, tough I sign. Think, I think, sorry, just thought I to cut you off, but I think this is almost bound to happen. Like we, we came, yeah, we came into we the season we saying that. We weren't anticipating Marc Gasol was going to be healthy the whole season. Exactly. With Marc Gasol, we, we were saying Marc Gasol had a long summer. Mm -hmm. We were going to rest him, and yeah. then Serge got hurt, and Marc Gasol has been playing some major minutes. And, you know, eventually, especially a big guy like that, your body is going to wear down. So, right? It yeah. wasn't even like it was a play where, like, he got hit or he, you know what I mean, was jumping or landed weird. Yeah. He just kind of, the, the, the muscle just kind of popped on him, right? I think it's just well, probably the strained hamstring or whatever it well, is. Well, it was listed as a strain, a hamstring strain, and that's yeah. why he was out of the game. And you hope that it's a strain, obviously, because that would be, you know, <laughs> right. obviously way better than it being a tear which you don't want to hear because that means you're out for an extended period of time. But either way, with Marcus Gasol, you could tell this is something that they're not – you're not going to rush him back. Definitely not. You're not going to play no, the next game. There's, there's no, no reason need to. to. Why do that? You know that he, his value is yeah. way more important down the stretch, especially if you're trying to make another run. I mean, there's some people who might be thinking his value is in the trade market. Yeah. And either way, that doesn't help him being hurt. So either way, you need Marcus Gasol to be healthy. Whichever yeah. way this season plays out – whether you're going for the playoffs or he's a, a factor at the trade deadline, either way, he's more valuable to you healthy. Definitely. So you do not rush Marcus all back. I definitely don't. If if it happens to just be a pulled muscle or, or strain, I definitely don't think you see Gasol back any sooner than Christmas Day. Yeah. No, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Um, I don't even think he'll be back by then. Just the way that it looked. I mean, he might want to just give it a go on Christmas Day just because yeah. it's Christmas Day and that's kind of a big deal, I guess. Yeah. But grand scheme of things, I don't know. Um, the other part of this is Norman Powell also went down. Right. We mentioned Gasol was piecing together a couple good games in a row. Norman Powell in the starting lineup was doing work. No doubt about it. My guy was going for 20 points a night over his last four starts. 18 points per game over his last nine. And we're asking for consistency from Norman Powell. And the thing that was super weird for me, mm -hmm. the way that this game started was OG and an OB putting in work. Okay. Right. OG, I had, had like 17 in the first half mm -hmm. and I thought, and Norm was missing shots. Norm started, I want to say like one of five. And I thought to myself, I'm like, wait, do Norm and OG ever play great in the same game? Because it always seemed that while Norm was having his good run, OG's numbers were down. Yeah. And it's not like their minutes are dependent upon each other. They both get the same minutes yeah. every game. Basically, so yeah. it's just weird to me that Norm was like, ah, okay, of course Norm's going to have a bad game now. And then he gets hurt. And it doesn't look good because he also missed a lot of time last year with a shoulder injury. And so to see him go down, I'm not sure if it's the same shoulder as last year. Right. Have, I'm not sure on that. Got to double check that for sure. But... To see Norm go down like that when he was finally appearing to be the Norm Powell that we've been waiting for, how tough of a loss is that to the Raptors now? I mean, I guess that's I. It, I mean, now obviously, right, right, right now with with Fred out already, right, the kind of the, the injury problems we've had. Yeah, 
Uh, obviously, it hurts. I guess, especially when you have you know Indiana, Boston, some of the the better teams coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we know we don't know how serious um, the injury is, whether it's just a bruise or whether something was dislocated. I don't know. Um, and don't worry, like, people. I'm still scouring Twitter <laughs> trying to get updates. Yeah. But yeah, Norman Powell, he was finally giving the Raptors consistent scoring, yeah. and to see him go down like that, I don't because. What do you what do you think of this? How badly do you think the, this will hurt the Raptors now that Norman Powell's out? Um, because I got a thought on it, and I like that's the reason I said Gasol is more of a a, a detriment. Him being yeah. out is more of a detriment because you have guys, as we see when Kyle was out, who can who have shown that they can come into play and play. Yeah. Whether it's Rondé, whether it's Terrence Davis, um, I read a report today that. Um, Fred might be back on the weekend. Yeah. Obviously, it's a kind of a wait and see. But if Fred, if Fred's back, obviously he gets most of those minutes. Yep. Right. So I, I, I think there's it gives just like when Lowry was out, it gives uh, TD three and the rest. Um, Patrick McCaw, it gives them more more time. It yeah. Gives them a chance to to kind of get their game into a groove. Right. So. Again, it's early in the season, so I think the, some of the, the injury uh, problems that the Raptors have had, it's good that it's happening early in the season. Yeah. Um, early reports are saying that Norm is in a sling after the game, which obviously is not a good sign if you're the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. Um, but it also seemed kind of the way that he was holding his shoulder and the way that he was going off, it didn't look good. It looked like it was dislocated. Yeah. Right. Like that, that would be the assumption to make. Um, not a good look at all for the Toronto Raptors. But the one thing I will say, despite how great Norm was finally playing consistently, the biggest thing you're missing is scoring, right? Like that basically was the, was what Norm was bringing to the table. And I think you can make up that scoring with other guys. Right. And it's not, it's not as difficult to make up, you know, ball movement, ball creating, creating plays on offense, you know. So and hopefully, it's a know, huge blow. Yeah, of so course, it's a of huge course. Blow. But hopefully, you know, it, 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 like you said, you've never seen Norm and OG kind of have have good <laughs> good games that coincide with each other. So maybe this was the start of of OG's run. Yeah, it was very rare. It was very rare because I know someone's probably scouring box scores right now yeah. to be like, they both had 10 points in this game. And what I mean is, I don't know if the how many times I've seen them both go for like either high 15, like high teens, high teens yeah. or 20s in the same game. That's kind of more so what I'm talking about. But regardless, huge blows to the Toronto Raptors. But it's a thing that we talked about from the onset of the season. You have to deal with injuries. And despite whatever you thought of this team coming into the year Mm -hmm. and how they would finish, where they would sit in the standings, the reality was if you're going high end, meaning you thought they were going to be top three, top two, that's based on complete health, which is a tough thing for any NBA team. But in a team like this, that's built more so with the sum of the parts as opposed to having the superstar, injuries are a huge blow. And we saw the Raptors go nine and two early on, Without Kyle and Serge, if you're in a situation now where you're going to miss, I mean, Freddie's been out and they've still been all right. But if you're talking about long term now without Norm and without Marc Gasol, it's just a really another opportunity to show the depth of this organization. Definitely. I assume, uh, what's a young buck in uh, the D-League? Dewan Hernandez? Dewan Hernandez, yep. I'm assuming he'll probably get a call up, probably get a look at some point, but it's another chance to show off the organizational depth. Because again, I know I get the slander for saying I thought they're going to finish five to eight. But to me, I guess the, my bigger point was this season is about development. This season is about seeing what you have right. in terms of the entire organization, seeing what pieces you have, seeing who's an asset and who isn't. And that's more important to me seeing now you're going to see what Chris Boucher is this season. Definitely. You're going to see what Terrence Davis is this season. And that's because of the injuries. In terms of Kyle Lowry, Serge, and and Marc Gasol, to me, this is all about asset management. Because, breaking news, I don't think the Raps are winning a championship this year. But you have assets that could be coming off your books at the end of the year. Do you just let them walk for nothing? We're going to find out. This is going to be a super interesting like rest of the season for the Toronto Raptors because they have a good team. They have a lot of depth. 
But now as you retool your championship team, you're going to get to see who's legit and who's not. And I appreciate that. I think that's a very interesting thing to pay attention to for the rest of the year. And I think, and I think again, obviously you don't wish injuries on anybody, but again, this all happening at the beginning of the season mm -hmm. allows you to evaluate your assets yeah. going into the new year and for the sure. trade deadline, right? So when Kyle went out, we got to see that, okay, if Fred is on the court and healthy, yeah. he can actually run this team and, and be your starting point guard, mm -hmm. right? We get to see that Norm is actually coming into his game, right? Now we'll get to see Boucher, DeWan Hernandez, mm -hmm. uh, Serge. We'll get yeah. to see how how valuable Serge is, yeah. right? If if you know if you're bringing back one of two big men, we'll we'll get to see whether mm -hmm. Serge is is that guy we can go forward with, or whether you know we need to search for something else. I totally at, at agree. that position, position, right? So all of this happening now, I mean, obviously you'd love you'd love to be one hundred percent healthy all year and you know win fifty games and go into the playoffs strong. You know, obviously that's not the reality. Look around the league. Look where Golden State is, right? Yeah. Um, but having getting getting this opportunity, I think again shows the, or the organizational depth, but also what you have and what you need going forward. Totally. And if you if there was a coach that could deal with it, it's obviously the coach of the Toronto Raptors. If you go back to last Definitely. season, the Raptors either led the league or were top three in terms of different starting lineups yep. that they used last year. Nick Nurse obviously comes from the D League, comes from playing overseas where and there's never, no real roster certainty. Exactly. But so you never you, and, and you never really see usually when a team starts Twenty different starting lineups. Yeah, those are bottom basement teams that are yeah. again searching for. Yeah, you know who's real and who's not. Well, again, we won the, the championship. That's the organizational depth, exactly. right? Being able to plug in at least slightly above replacement level players. Yeah, right. Like the exactly. drop off isn't drastic from Norm to Terrence Davis. Right. Right. Like it's a drop off. It's a drop off, but it's but not massive. And we've seen it's already, more, and it's more of an experience drop off than yes. Yeah. And I think, too, the other part of seeing the injuries now is you kind of know what Norm is. You kind of know what Norm is. You yep. see the flashes. You see the potential. But you know what that is in terms of your asset. Right. You want to see what Terrence Davis is in terms of your asset. You know you've, you've already won in the sense that he was undrafted. But right. now, going forward, how big of a piece is this guy? Because eventually, the way that I look at his game, I could see him being a sixth man and a solid you know, contributing guy coming off your bench night in, night out. And that's a dub. And if you really think about it, that's all you asked from Norm the past how many years? Yeah, exactly. And he got it in flashes. Right. So again, I'm excited to see where things go here in terms of how do you work through the offense now? I think you need you need Freddie back with Gasol down because you need the ball movement, and right. that's going to be super key going forward, especially against the really good teams. Because I think the Pistons are not a good team, as currently yeah. constituted. Right. And in this game, if they could just make some shots, they might have come back and like won this game. But they're just not that good. Yeah. If I'm keeping it a buck. Well, like just like somebody said, like D Rose is is probably their best player. And not to slander D Rose or anything like that that's a bad thing, but it's not obviously D Rose is not what he was when he was winning MVPs, right? Yeah, not um, not really a good look. Uh there's lots of comments filtering in, so of course let's get to some comments because this is also a part of why we are here. To start the pot, I asked you guys what you think of who is out of the lineup, what is a bigger or actually, I guess, what's the bigger storyline? Is it the fact that the Raptors won the game or the bigger loss being Fred or uh, Marcus Gasol? So we got tons of feedback filtering in, uh, people sending their, you know, well wishes or good wishes. Linda checks in and says, uh, both hope they're not injured too bad. Uh, I still haven't seen any update on the socials yet, but I will check for sure. Uh, let's see. Someone says, Sage says, what do you think about this? The Raptors need to sign Jamal Crawford ASAP in case Norm is out four to eight weeks. I see you thinking about it. I don't think they need Jamal Crawford. <laughs> if I'm answering the question, I don't think they need Jamal Crawford. I just think let Terrence Davis sink or swim. Let some of your young bucks sink or swim. I still am waiting for them to pull the chip on uh, what's my guy in the D-League right now? 
Justin Anderson. Justin Anderson. Yeah. Right? So, like, I know he's simmering right now in the D-League cooking. Like, he's an NBA-level player. Yeah. You're just waiting to see... You know, you're trying to see all the other seasonings on the well, side. Well, they don't. They don't. Sense, so right? Justin Anderson is actually not on our roster, yeah. right? So in order to bring him up, somebody's yeah. got to go for sure. But that's fine. Well, we all know who that someone is. That's fine. Right. That's fine. But yeah. And, and again, we're, you're fine with it. It's just there's a lot of things going on. But of course, I don't think you bring in. You bring in Jamal again. This all comes back to: Do you have championship aspirations or not? Yeah. And I guess I'm coming from that picture where I don't have championship aspirations. Yeah, so if Jamal. you were like the Lakers and like Rondo's out and Caruso's out, yes, go get Jamal Crawford because you need someone who you can plug and play and yeah. play in the playoffs for you. That's not, yeah, I don't think it's somebody you necessarily add in December. Mm-hmm. That's a February, March. We're going down the stretch. We need this. We couldn't get it in the tra- at the trade deadline, or we didn't want to give up any of our core, and we want to plug him in for a playoff run. That's not a. It's not a December move. Yeah. Right. Again, the Raptors. It is the Eastern Conference, and although better, we're not. You know, tied for eighth, struggling, hoping to keep that last playoff spot. We're still, I believe, firmly in playoff position. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously. We got some tough games coming up. Indiana back to back with Boston. A lot can change. Yep. And then my answer will change. But at this point right now, you know, let Jamal Crawford chill. Uh, K2's Garnett checks in on Instagram and says, Your boy Malcolm Miller going to cook in the next couple of games. LOL. Uh, I mean, that's another guy who, who, you know, here's an opportunity for him mm -hmm. to either show. That he belongs, yeah, and and can be that depth guy when needed. You can call upon him, or like you said, he might be the guy to go to bring and give Justin Anderson that chance. Yeah, totally. Uh, Adrian checks in on Instagram and says, "I want to see Freddie and Matt Thomas back on." Matt Thomas has almost been a forgotten kind of guy because he's been out yeah. for a while now with the broken finger, I think it is. Yeah. But it's been a while since we've seen Matt Thomas. Of course, there's minutes available now, so. Definitely. He better hope he's back soon, right? Because this yeah. is a good a good chance for him to get back into the lineup. I did read somewhere today that Fred is practicing, you yeah. know, contact, full full basketball activities. Yeah. And should be back by the weekend. But again, it's Yeah, I saw Nurse said uh their last practice, he stayed after and was getting in some work with the young guys and seemed to have a lot uh, uh more uh pep in his step, let's say. Right. I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what he's saying, and uh, it looks good, like he's on his way back. Yeah, I mean, again, we're in a, we're we're in we're in a good spot where there's no need to rush him back until he is 100. percent We don't want you don't need Freddie coming in at 80 mm-hmm. percent and going back out. Right, let him come back when he's full, fully ready to go, and. Because he's going to come be coming back playing, especially if Norm, if this Norm injury is more serious than we 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 hope it is, um, he's going to be playing some major minutes. So you don't need him coming back at less than one hundred percent now. Yeah, totally. Alex checks in and says, "Sad to lose guys to injuries, but this is a great chance for evaluating everything we got going for us. Definitely. Um, time for." Time to show our organizational sorry. Time for our organizational depth to show once again. Um, another comment just says Hustle Squad is back on, yeah. <laughs> right? Because those minutes are, are coming right back. Exactly, and that's how the NBA season works. You got to stay ready. If you're a young guy like Boucher, I know it's been weird because your minutes got taken away once Surge came back. But we talked about it at the time, right? When Surge did come back, we're like, well, we know the Gasol either rest slash. You know, it get, being banged up, it was exactly. going to happen. It was going to happen. Especially at this stage of his career, you know that was going to be uh, the way that things would go on for Marcus Gasol. And again, again, it, again, with Boucher, I think uh, Nurse plays him when the matchup dictates we can play Boucher. Mm-hmm. But now with Gasol out, just like when Serge was out, Boucher is, it has to be put in the game. Yeah, and if he can show that he can be effective in the different matchups that the NBA on a day-to-day basis will 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 present you with, 
then it gives Nick the opportunity that even when Gasol comes back, he doesn't need to play 32, 35 minutes a game. So an interesting point brought up here on in, on uh, Twitter, Raptor Homer says, Rondé Hollis Jefferson and Chris Boucher should play together so that the team rebounding won't be compromised. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I it's don't... It's an interesting lineup because if you put them with Siakam, right. right, you could do that. And I think Siakam has to know now that He's got to be more of a paint presence without Gasol. Right. Kind of got to have that mentality, stay in and rebound more. But also team rebounding comes in to be a really big factor at this point. And it's not even that Marc Gasol's rebounding numbers are crazy. It's just being a presence and boxing out. Because exactly. a lot of things people don't really take in or pay attention to is he might not be getting the rebound, but he's taking out the other team's big to allow someone else to get a rebound. Right? Does that make sense? Definitely. Um, speaking of, though, I think Linda's trying to call me out here. Says, funny how you rep about how you don't look at Mark's stats, but don't talk about Kyle, who does so much more. I think this is because Kyle Lowry tonight, I don't know if I mentioned it, have I mentioned oh, yeah, Kyle Lowry had a triple-double tonight? To Kyle Lowry, 20 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists for a triple-double um, by Mr. Kyle Lowry. And my thing with Kyle Lowry... Because, again, his shooting numbers are what I really pay attention to a lot with Kyle Lowry. Mm -hmm. Because everything else is just about pace. And he did a good job in this game in, in setting the, the dictating the pace and the energy that the Raptors played with in this game. So, I guess, like, the triple-double, cool. Like, that's a dope stat. But he shot 5 for 17, which isn't really that good. Mm -hmm. But also, he has to shoot, almost like we were talking about with Fred... And Pascal, when the injuries went down, right. you just need to get shots up because you need to get to the 20s. So I could see that's what happened with Kyle. What I really want to give Kyle Lowry credit for, and this is going to sound weird, so stick with me for a second. The refs weren't good in this game, right? No. The refs were bad. And if you know me, you follow this podcast, you know I am never going to blame a game on the refs because I think the refs are trash on both sides. And you saw that tonight. There were egregious calls multiple throughout the game and a lot of them did go against the raptors some of them did go against the pistons as well mm -hmm. but there's one point when kyle took his tech and then i think nurse or siakam took a tech right after that either way i think there were four yeah, I, I think there were four techs two yeah. on each side but either way whoever took the second tech i think it was siakam you're right it seemed to like spur the Raptors on and give them energy. And it kind of gave Kyle that chip on his shoulder that we're so familiar with. Cause my guy came down, bangs into threes, talking shit to the crowd, yeah. like not to the crowd, but like hyping himself up. And he, I think the rest of the team really followed suit. And on the negative side, you see a lot more of the Raptors and Nick Nurse arguing every single call, much like Kyle does. Like it's just showing he is the leader of the team. Yeah. Like, they take after Kyle Lowry. But tonight, I thought it was a positive in the sense that in a game that lacked flow, a game that lacked energy, he took the slight of the bad calls and turned that into a positive energy. And I think the rest of the team followed that as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ky that, Kyle, Linda, Linda, are you okay with that? I know that's not talking, <laughs> but it's not bigging up the stats, but it's the X factor that Kyle is capable of being and that we see night in, night out, no? Yeah, I think... You know, Kyle is temperamental. And when, <laughs> when he decides to channel that in a positive way, yeah, it's always good for the Raptors. There's always there's usually is his game his game and his numbers go up, yeah. but I think the whole team kind of it, it energizes them. But then there are also those times where and this I guess everybody's like this, but if you're Kyle, you're the heart and lead of the team and you know that uh, your play and your attitude flows through through the rest of the players, yeah, where it does bring us down, mm -hmm. right? Totally. So, so I think that's where maybe Linda was saying, like Kyle gets some flack uh, at times, where he'll argue a call and then he'll argue every call after that, and it kind of takes the like basketball is secondary to the <laughs> refs at that point, right? Yeah. Where and then that ends up hurting the team, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas tonight, I think. He, he took the call. He realized it was a bad call. There was a couple other bad calls around after that. And he's like, okay, it's going to be one of those nights. But it, he, it didn't turn into I'm going to argue with the refs all game. Yeah. And, that's, and the basketball will be secondary, right? 
he played he played his game and ended up with a triple double. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, getting to more comments, talking about the injuries. K2's Garnett says Gasol is going to be a, a Gasol a big loss, but we're going to need him fresh for the playoffs. Damn, last game he was actually demanding the ball in the post. And that's big for K2's Garnett, because I know my yep. guys always here normally slandering me for my <laughs> Gasol love. So for him to be acknowledging Gasol being a big loss, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, Fly Miss says, everyone that calls Gasol trash, y'all going to see how much he'll be missed. Totally agree with that. Uh, Tammy's asking, what about all the texts tonight? Yeah, and that's what I mean. It was both ways. Like yeah. Blake Griffin was mad at calls. Drummond was mad at calls. Casey was mad at calls. Nick Nurse. Like, that's what I mean. Most to- most often than not, the refs are just trash both ways. It's not like and it's, the and referees it, are out here being like, you know what? I don't like those Toronto refs. And it's not going to get better. Like, like the Dick Pavettas of the world, those those guys oh, wow. are gone. I forgot about Dick Pavetta. I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen wow. Dick Pavetta. Wow. Like, those guys are gone. The guys that, you know, when they d- actually do make a bad call, will acknowledge it and be like, okay, I got you. You know what I mean? It's gone. Those guys are gone. They have a whole new. There's a whole new shipment of refs. Um, can't even remember dude's name. As long as he doesn't rep our rep Tony our game. Brothers. Tony, as long as Tony Brothers doesn't cross the border. You it's know. bad that I knew exactly. Who you're talking <laughs> exactly. About. Yeah. It's pretty bad. And, that, and that's the point. The fact that yeah. you we like we like Dick Bavetta was kind of like the celebrity of the refs. Mm-hmm. You know, he raced he raced Barkley. raced Charles Barkley and all of that. <laughs> Other than that, you really shouldn't even know the refs' names. Right? The fact that we know the refs' names means that they're affecting the game a little bit too much. No, I totally agree. Totally agree. And one thing I want to ask you about, because I thought the Raptors, the Raptors going to Detroit, that's a trip I want to make at one point. Yeah. And I plotted out my like vacation from work work like a while ago, but never actually paid attention. Like I knew there was a Raptor game tonight, but never really paid attention to where it was or who they were playing at. And then today I was like, ah, if I plotted this out, I would have went to this game in Detroit. And they were talking about it on the broadcast. It was pretty funny just about how they have to pump in so much audio, whether it's let's go deep or defense chat chance, or whether it's just crowd noise or music to drown out all the Raptors fans that yeah. are in Detroit. <laughs> Cause that's how bad it's gotten. But I thought that was hilarious. And that is a trip I want to make at some point and go check out a game. Just heard a blast of the big shot <laughs> over the Raptors chats. Yeah. Oh man. So I'm going to read some comments here from Ryan Wolstat, who works for Toronto sun Raptors beat guy. Um, he says, both Powell and Gasol declined to talk about injuries. The tests are coming tomorrow. And Lowry said last year's Raptors managed to avoid injuries, and that was massive for them. Obviously not going the same way so far this year. Load management, man. It just it, you get it one way or another. <laughs> right? You know what we got? I think it's Washington on Friday. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think so. so that's not exactly uh, you know you know us over here. It's not a big boy game, yeah. Right. I mean, other than Bradley Beal, you're not really going in there thinking like you need your A one lineup in in there. So <laughs> so even if all tests come back negative and and Powell and Gasol are able to go on Friday, why not the rest of them? No, you true. I mean? There's no need to rush them back. Exactly. Like absolutely zero need to rush any of these guys back into the lineup and uh to get more comments in fly miss says it's actually cheaper to go to a pistons game the 100 section than it is to go to a raptors game 300 section yeah. and we should Alan, do that we should do a, a, a ball on blast from detroit? road trip to detroit <laughs> that'd be funny uh alex does check in and says washington is a small boy game <laughs> yeah fair enough but either way raptors come away with the win against the detroit pistons raptors improved to 19 and 8 on the season after a 112 to 99 victory raptors have done a really good job in turning around getting back into the win winning side of things after a tough week tough stretch and now they're just back to taking care of business good thing to see there for the toronto raptors because the eastern conference standings are insane yeah it's gonna be a dog fight the whole way through and very like from two to six, yeah, it was, is going to be a fight. It was literally, I think, 
It was one literally game. like a, a game and a half or yeah. difference between one uh, between two and six. So everyone's going to be important. And, and the Milwaukee's fact that, been losing some games too. Well, the fact that everyone keeps pointing to record against 500 teams and below, hey, you got to take care of business. Exactly. That's, that might end up being the difference. How many of those games against teams you should beat, you lose, that could be the difference in playoff seating. So... Good on the Raptors for getting this win against the Pistons. Hopefully they keep that same energy against the Washington Wizards on a Friday night. But Q, where can the people hit you up in between time, in the meantime, to talk Toronto Raptors and everything else going on? Again, peoples, thank you all for, for chiming in tonight. Always a pleasure. Uh, in between games, holler at me at simply underscore just underscore Q. That's on Instagram and on Twitter. Or at DDS Caps on both social media. Check us out at DDScaps.com. And of course, you can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander. Same thing goes for Instagram at Sheldon Alexander. And you know, this is the live post game show. We're here for each and every Toronto Raptors game. And even during the holidays, I know last year we took a couple days off just because it was a holiday, so still trying to sort out some last-minute scheduling things, but just act as if we'll be here for each and every Toronto Raptors game over the holidays and beyond because this is your Raptors post-game show where we do try and take your questions. We don't, we don't try. We do take your questions. I guess we try to take all of your questions, but it's not really possible to do that. But we try to do as many as possible. Yeah, Three-hour show. Right? But... It just shows how big this has grown because the feedback from you guys have been great. Really appreciate you guys tuning in, whether you're doing it live or taking in the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, liking and subscribing there, telling your friends, sharing. It's it's a movement. The Wrap It Up podcast is doing big things, and I just want to always say thank you because I appreciate you guys because we wouldn't be doing this without you guys so i really appreciate it for sure and we will be back for on friday night for the game against the wizards hopefully we'll get some injury news i mean we will have injury news by then and right now it just doesn't look good i would assume that neither of those guys will play the next game but we'll find out for sure and i mean chris boucher is going for 20 and 10 on friday <laughs> heard it here first pick him up in your fantasy pools Yo, I mean, I, I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope you're right. But again, this is opportunity. This is opportunity. To me, this is about. a good thing because this is about opportunity. You're trying, as you retool your championship team, you need to see who's with you, who you're going to ride with, and who you're not. So this is just about opportunity. And hopefully, you guys enjoyed this opportunity to chop it up with us after every Raptor game because... I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps post-game show, as always, unpolished and unapologetic. Until next time, see ya. On Blast.